Hi, this is Dr. K from My Medical School, and here's today's USMLE Step 1 practice question. A 76-year-old female was walking on an icy sidewalk when she fell. She braced her fall with her outstretched hands. She noted significant pain at her right wrist after the fall, but she did not want to seek medical care. Two months later, she presents to her primary care doctor's office with complaints of a lack of sensation in her hand. You see her in the office and complete an examination. Her examination identifies a weak grip and pain radiating to the fifth finger when the anterior aspect of the median side of the wrist is tapped. When the hand is held deviated to the ulnar side, you have her flex the fourth and fifth distal interphalangeals against resistance, which elicits pain. What bone and nerve are likely affected? Is it A, pisiform and the median nerve, B, trapezoid and the ulnar nerve, C, scaphoid bone and the radial nerve, D, hamate bone and the ulnar nerve, or E, capitate and the ulnar nerve? Pause here and think about it, but if you're ready to proceed, let's go on to the answer. The correct answer is D, hamate bone fracture and ulnar nerve. The eight important bones of the wrist, also known as the carpal bones, are scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, pisiform, hamate, capitate, trapezoid, and trapezium. Whenever a fracture is suspected with an outstretched hand, think of the two most common fractures in this setting. The two most common fractures are scaphoid fracture and distal radius fractures. The scaphoid bone is the largest bone on the radial aspect of the wrist. Scaphoid fractures may not be seen on x-ray right after a fall. Pain in the surface depression on the radial side of the posterior outstretched hand, also known as a snuff box, should raise suspicion for a scaphoid fracture. The borders of the snuff box include the tendons of the extensor pollicis longus on the medial side and the tendons of the extensor pollicis brevis as well as abductor pollicis longus on the lateral side. The floor of the snuff box is made of the trapezium and scaphoid bones. The snuff box contains branches of the radial artery, superficial branches of the radial nerve, and the cephalic vein. The two most common distal radius fractures are a Coles and Smith fracture. In a Coles fracture, there is posterior displacement of the distal portion of the radius, a so-called dinner fork deformity. This occurs when someone falls with an outstretched extended hand and lands on the palmar or anterior side of their hand. A Smith fracture is an anterior displacement of the distal radius. This occurs when someone tries to brace their fall but lands on the dorsal aspect of their hand with it fully flexed. In addition to the most common fractures, there are some rare ones that occur with a fall with outstretched hands. Fractures of the hook of the hamate bone are difficult to diagnose. It is important to understand the surrounding anatomy to understand how a hook of hamate fracture can cause symptoms. The superficial sensory branch of the ulnar nerve passes near the hook of the hamate bone. It supplies the posterior and medial aspect of the fourth and fifth digits. In addition, the ulnar nerve motor branch supplies the hyperthenar muscles. The hypothenar muscles are responsible for the movement of the fifth digit or pinky. Hamate bone fractures are typically seen with activities that require a strong grip, such as racquetball, golf, and baseball. Pain and limited motion in the fourth and fifth fingers are associated with hamate fractures due to the fracture irritating the flexor tendons causing tendonitis. A helpful diagnostic feature is called the hamate pull test. The hamate pull test is when you have the patient bend the wrist to the medial or ulnar side, then you have the patient flex the fourth and fifth fingers against resistance. The test can reproduce pain and is sensitive for a hook of hamate fracture. Well, that is today's USMLE Step 1 practice question. Please like, share, and subscribe. This is Dr. K from my medical school, and I'll see you next time.